Chiefs Kingdom. Welcome back to All Chiefed Up. We're back with another podcast for that ass. And today, Steve, the Chiefs signed wide receiver Rasheed Rice. Let's talk about it. Before we get started, 95% of you guys have not clicked that subscribe button yet. That's crazy. Hit that subscribe button. We're trying to get to 10K before the season starts. Mike Rasheed Rice finally signed his rookie deal. We don't know the details yet, but what do you know about it? Yeah, Rasheed Rice signed. We knew it was going to take a little bit of time. Sky Moore took a little bit of time last year. Wide receivers are a little bit more of divas than everybody else. They put a lot of, I don't know what they do, but the wide receivers take forever to sign, it seems. Felix already signed. All of our late-round picks had already signed. Uh, but we got him in, and it was about a, the time we said it was going to happen. It wasn't going to be early. It wasn't going to be super late in the camp. But they got him in, got him signed. Do you think it's going to take him longer to learn the playbook than it was to sign him? Yeah, for sure. It's going to take him at least a year and a half to learn this playbook all the way. Yes. And I'm not knocking Rasheed Rice. That's just how it is. I think Sky Moore is going to have a big year because I think he has a better understanding now than he did last year. He's just now getting to that point where he's going to feel comfortable in this offense. And we saw Patrick Mahomes talking about him as well, saying he's going to take over that juju role, which I've been saying for a while now. So I'm excited to see where Rasheed Rice fits into this offense, man, because he's pretty talented. I like Rasheed Rice. I think he does a lot of things. A lot of analysts are saying that he was not on the big boards of some of the of the other teams in the draft. The Chiefs reached on him. Uh, we traded up. We took him too high. Uh, he's going to be a boomer bust. I actually thought he was a big boomer bust candidate for the Chiefs for all those reasons and the way that uh, Andy Reid likes to you know, usher in the wide receivers and not really give them a lot of responsibility, not a lot of plays, not a lot of snaps. Um, I think Rasheed Rice could be that. A lot of Chiefs Kingdom are sold that this guy's going to come in and he's going to go for 500 to 1,000 yards in his first season. Steve, what's your over-under on 500 yards? Do you think that's possible for Rasheed Rice? I think that's a good starting line, right? I mean, I don't, I don't think he is going to get anywhere near 1,000 yards. He's just not going to get that much work in his rookie year. I mean, we saw that with Sky Moore last year. He he kind of came into the offense a little bit more towards the end of the year. But in the early in the season, most of the time when you saw Sky Moore, it was when he was muffing a punt on special teams. Yeah. It wasn't because he was on the field. So I feel like Rasheed Rice is going to slowly get integrated into the offense. I'm going to say, huh, I'm going to be optimistic and say that he breaks the 500 yards. But I don't think it'll be much more than that. Yeah, I think it's going to be between somewhere between 400 and 600 give or take a little bit, but I would probably take the under on the 500 if I had to put my money on it, just because, like you said, they don't get utilized a lot in the first year, um, and we got a big wide receiver room. We really do. We've got a lot of talent in there. It's not a lot of top-tier talent. A lot of people are saying, hey, we got Rasheed Rice. Uh, we got our D-Hop. This is D-Hop. Uh, it could be D-Hop, but that's putting a lot of lofty goes on him yet again, <laughs> which we know Chiefs Keaton likes to throw those out. Look, I, I don't like expect D-Hop anytime soon from Rasheed Rice. I like the different element that Rasheed Rice brings to our wide receiver room. I mean, Justin Ross is slightly similar, whereas these are guys that can play jump ball, right? But Rasheed Rice relies on it heavily. If you look at back at his college tape, he's completely fine just playing jump ball. He's not the greatest route runner in the world. He doesn't get a whole lot of separation. So, right. I mean, there are different elements, but he's good at what he does. So, I mean, if he can get settled in and learn this stuff, I mean, he's a different element for a wide receiver than we're used to seeing because we're always used to the smaller guys. Like when they drafted Sky Moore last year, we were like, of course that's who they drafted. They didn't take George Pickens. But this year they kind of leaned more towards someone like that. So we'll see what happens as he grows in this offense and everything. But I think it'll take him a good year and a half to get settled in. Yeah, I agree. Speaking of wide receivers we signed, we signed one today, uh, Kakoa Crawford. The Chiefs signed Kakoa Crawford. According to Aaron Wilson, the Chiefs are signing Kakoa Crawford to the roster. I can't stop saying Kakoa Crawford. Kakoa, Kakoa. I'm probably saying it wrong. But uh, he was drafted last year by the Colts. They actually cut him right before the season started. It says he was Kikoa. waived. Kakoa played for the Kakolts. Kakoa. Kakoa was on the Kakolts, and before that he was on the California Golden Bears. So <laughs> this guy, he, he's already, I don't want to say he's been a journeyman, but he's already played with two teams. Uh, he got waived right before the season started. He's a big guy, Steve. I think he's like six foot one, two hundred pounds. This is some of his stats from college. He started his career at Michigan. Uh, if you if you look at his stuff here, four receptions for uh, forty seven right, yards and a touchdown, time. seventeen for a touchdown, sixteen for two touchdowns, nineteen for two touchdowns, forty receptions, no touchdowns there in his senior season, his fifth year season with California. He kind of come into Cal as the time Nico Remigio left for Fresno State. Um, is this a signing worth even talking about, or is this just a camp body at this point? Now, I hate to be that guy, but I don't c -c -c care about Kakakoa that much. It's just a camp body, a c -c camp body. And uh, I don't c -c 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 know, man. Quit. I just, feel, the... 
I just feel like this is something that, you know, Chiefs fans will talk about and be like, oh, we got this cool wide receiver. He could be the greatest thing ever, man. He's a diamond in the rough. Now nah, he's well, a camp body. He That's did what try out is. for us. He tried out for us in May, I believe, and then we signed him today to a little bit of a contract. So they did see something there. I don't think it's anything of importance. To me, right. it looks like Cornell Powell part two, possibly. And We've we know already how talked about out. this. We've already talked about how cramped that wide receiver room is. Yeah. The only person that's coming in to the Chiefs right now and taking a an honest spot in the top wide receivers is going to be D Hop. Anybody else, good luck making the squad. I like Nico though. I really like Nico Romillo. Uh I like to say the last name. I don't know if he can squeeze into that what six you, or seven. Can you blend their names together? Kakoa Romijo. Nico Kakoa Romijo. <laughs> Nico Kakoa. whatever. It is what it is. Um <laughs> Speaking of OTAs, we wrap that up today. Andy yep. Reid was at a presser. He gave us a little bit of stuff. Matt Mullen tweets out, Coach Reid listed some players dealing with injuries, but said most of these guys will be ready for camp. Blake Bell, appendectomy surgery. So he had appendicitis. I did not Dang. know Blake Bell had to have appendectomy surgery. Mike Edwards dealing with a hamstring. Um, all these DBs always are dealing with hamstrings. Trent right. Duffy, a little stress on the fibula. I don't know what that means. Stress on fibula. Uh, Pacheco, still the shoulder surgery, Trey Smith, tricep, Legereus Sneed with a little bit of a knee problem, and then Turk Wharton with that ACL knee recovery. Uh, do any of these surprise you? Do any of these worry you? Do you see all these guys being back for camp? Andy did say that they should be ready for camp. Yeah, the only one that I'm not for sure will be ready for camp or not. Well, actually, there's two. Isaiah Pacheco, I know he said he should be ready by then, but we'll see how that plays out. And then Turk Wharton coming back off that ACL. That's a big injury to come back from. So we'll see where he's at. I'm pretty surprised that Blake Bell's had such a crappy year. He had to have hip surgery, and then he turned around and had to have right. his appendix taken out. So he, he's he been going through it as and well. Chiefs, be... Kingdom, Chiefs Kingdom's trying to cut the guy. They're like, oh, Bushman's <laughs> going to come in and take his job. But y'all leave, Bla <laughs> leave Blake Bell alone. This guy's going through surgeries and everything. He's the best oh. blocking tight end we have. He's one of the best in football. I think Andy Reid loves the guy, and I think that he will have a place on this roster, even though he had a rough year. But yeah, man, that's kind of where I'm at with it. I'm not worried about any of those injuries right now. It's still way too freaking early to even be caring about it unless it's something major. So all that minor stuff, not a big deal at all. Uh, we'll see how it goes when Cam gets here. I'm worried about the McDuffie, the stress on the fibula. What does that mean? Does it that just mean he gained? Did, did McDuffie pump up in the offseason and now all this muscle mass is putting a little stress on the fibula? Or his like what's happening? His legs tired. His, I think his legs tired. He's tired of carrying this defense is what it is, my man. Oh, <laughs> now, oh the, the warden. warden's going to be good to go. The warden's yeah. going to be good to go, so I'm not worried. Right. Well, you did mention Isaiah Pacheco, and a lot of people are talking about the running back room. It's been thrown out that Zeke Elliott is a possible sign. A lot of people are saying, we're not going to sign Zeke. We got Pacheco. I don't think anybody's thinking. Like, I don't understand when people talk about signing players. They think that we're automatically going to put them into the we're league. going to start them. Yeah, yeah. And you're just booting <laughs> everybody else. And it's like, we get that you have Pacheco. You don't have to tell us. We know. <laughs> Uh, we like Pacheco. Zeke's not going to be signed to do that. He's going to play the, the Rojo role for insurance. Uh, but Jarek McKinnon actually come in yesterday. Chiefs where I reported this one. Uh, Jarek McKinnon was stunned by UDFA rookie Daneric Prince's size and speed. Apparently, the first time he come onto the field, he's seen Daneric Prince, and he was like, this dude is big and he is fast. I've lost my job. Like that's, well, his, that's his mentality. So what do you think about that one? To be fair about it, I bet everyone looks really big compared to Jarek McKinnon. It's right. like a it's little like a kid looking up to their there. dad, right? So it's like, I don't know. But, I mean, obviously the guy is a is a big dude, and he's really athletic. We've all all seen the tape on the guy. And if you haven't seen the tape, someone said, quit talking about the tape if you're not going to show the tape. Well, guess what? You have YouTube. Look, look at me. Go go to the search bar and type in Daenerys Prince highlights. I promise you'll see all of them that you need to see. Yeah, we've but put anyway. a bunch of highlights on here before. We can't just jack everybody's highlights. We'll get, you know, they'll kick us no, off. I'm here. done with it. I'm done with it. You're gonna you're gonna stop being lazy and you're gonna type it in Daenerys Prince highlights in the search bar. You can do but some anyway, work. No, man, I, I'm super pumped about Daenerys Prince. Um, I th I think he's gonna be great, and I think I think he does make the squad. We, we had him at a fifty fifty. I raise it to like a 70-30. I'm almost positive this guy's going to make the squad at this point unless they go out and do add to the running back room because we know they want to keep four. We know that's going to happen. And then there's still always a possibility of Clyde getting traded away. So, I mean, yeah, I think he's pretty much, he's not a lock per se, but I'd say he's pretty close to it. I like Daenerys Prince. I've been preaching this. I was a big proponent of Daenerys Prince. I thought right. he was a fifth-round talent. I thought he was possibly at the, the lowest of sixth-round talent. 
And then this guy goes UDFA. And I was sitting here the whole time like, why is Generic Prince not coming off the board? I actually thought like Dwayne McBride got drafted way later than we all thought he was yeah. going to. I bet There's you he gets some work. This, this just goes this goes into what every, what we've been saying. The running back right. position is fading from the NFL. I don't know why they're still valuable, but um, you and Haley were talking about this last night on our live. If you haven't watched that, go back and watch it. It was pretty awesome. She's very insightful. Uh, she's easy on the eyes, according to the chat, and uh, they want me to wear a blonde wig now because of her. Thanks a lot, Haley. Well, that's other just than weird. that, yeah. Other than that. Uh, no, but I don't. I don't think the running back position's fading per se. Like it's not going to disappear like the fullback position. It'll always be there, but the value has gone down tremendously. And you've seen that with the guys this year that are still looking for an extension or a deal, like Saquon Barkley. It's just not what it used to be. And actually, like I said, mentioned on the live last night, I saw a graphic where it was like these were the guys six years ago that were the best running backs in the league. And right. there were some names on there that you would recognize, like Kareem Hunt and Alvin Kamara and and some other guys. But there were some on there, I don't even remember who they were. And they were the top running backs in the league six years ago. I, I would say the majority of the list were guys that are completely irrelevant today. And uh, it just shows you that like the lifespan of a running back in the NFL is very, very short these days. Uh, they're not getting paid the way they used to. And I think that some of them, when they do come in and they're superstars like Derrick Henry, their teams beat them into the ground. So, I mean, it's just... um. It's not well, as valuable as it used to be. You seen the 49ers give up a lot last year to get Christian McCaffrey. And they actually said that was a good trade. He come in, they won a lot of games afterwards. But McCaffrey right. is no spring chicken. And the dude's got a lot of injury history. We're going to see how that trade plays out in the next, probably this right. year. You're going to see how that trade looks. But I'm with you. I think the running back position is kind of being, uh, it's not utilized the same way. You even got like the Eagles now running that quarterback sneak and all these mobile quarterbacks right. running well, RPOs and things. You don't just have to pound it up inside a bunch. That's what I was getting at, man. It's like, not only is it a pass-heavy league now, like everybody's pass I mean, we watch the Chiefs every week. They're the most pass-heavy offense in the league, probably. And we see it right on display. And then we're always, you know, pounding the table, being like, why doesn't Andy Reid run the ball more? But this guy's winning Super Bowl. So it's hard to argue with that strategy when he's out here winning like crazy, uh, not running, you know, 25 and 30 times a game. Uh, so, I mean... A lot of teams, like you mentioned, the Eagles are one, Baltimore is another one. They just want their running backs to be the quarterback nowadays. Uh, right. Even Buff, even Buffalo. It's like a lot of times when they run the ball, they're just letting their quarterbacks do it. They don't care about the halfback. Buffalo, they've had a decent rushing attack in the last few years, but think about the running backs. They've not been good. Devin Singletary, Zach Moss, I can't even name some of the other hey, James Cook last year. If you're going to run it up in the hole, you give it to the guy that loves Pennis. Yeah, that's right. I mean, that's what... Josh that's Allen what... will do it. Josh Allen will run it up in the hole for you there. Um, speaking of guys that were drafted to play running back and is on the decline here. This is one of the guys. The Chiefs actually brought him in for a workout. Um, Four-year NFL veteran Darrell Henderson. Okay. He also tried out with Kakoa Crawford. We've seen that Kakoa Crawford, Kakoa got the contract, the Kakoa contract, and Darrell Henderson did <laughs> did, did, did not. And that and. <laughs> So what does that mean? Was this something that they just wanted to kick the tires on this guy? Or does this really mean that the Chiefs are looking to maybe bring in a veteran presence? Uh, maybe they're looking to ship Clyde out of here after that whole debacle with him talking about his jersey come up missing and he had prior commitments to a Super Bowl, which is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But does that mean, because I'm with you, I think Denary Prince is going to make this team. I, I, I'm sitting somewhere around 75 to 80% he makes it. But if Clyde does get traded, you need a fourth. And like you said, Jerry Neely could do that, but he's right now he's listed at wide receiver. So are they still looking for another running back? Maybe not as big of a name as Cl or Zeke, but a Darrell Henderson, somebody like that. What do you think? I mean, it's a possibility. It just depends on if they're planning on moving Clyde. If they have ideas of moving Clyde away, then yeah, let's get our, our veteran running back in here. He probably won't ever play. He'll probably take five snaps over Rojo. across the season like Rojo. but. If someone goes down, if we need him in a pinch, I'm not worried about putting Darrell Henderson in there. We we all saw him come in and put in great snaps uh, when Cam Akers couldn't stay on the field. Uh, was that who Cam it was? Cam Akers, another there big running back that right. underperformed and got injured. Right. So, I mean, we know this guy can do it. You know he's got the experience. So, yeah, somebody like that could could be a value if you do move Clyde. If you don't move Clyde, I think we quit talking about the running back room altogether because I think it's already set. I mean, you're going to have Isaiah Pacheco, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Jarek McKinnon, and Daenerik Prince as your fourth. 
I think that's 100% what's going to happen if nothing changes right now. If they trade Clyde, you might see them kick the tires on a Darrell Henderson or someone like that. Otherwise, I think the running back room's set, man. To me, with the Chiefs, you got an offensive position and you got a defensive position that the Chiefs have just decided, hey, we're just going to go committee. That's DBs and that's running backs. We don't tend to pay corners in Kansas City. That's why we said no. Legereus Sneed could be in trouble this year. We don't do it. Brett Veach loves to draft them. He drafts them late, and he hits. Nick Jones is looking amazing this season. Shamari Connor is going to contribute on special teams right away, and he's going to be good. Naze Johnson's getting back in. He was a seventh-round pick. You've seen Watson do it last year as a seventh-round pick. Josh Williams, a fourth-round pick, was fine. We did blow one on McDuffie in the first round, but McDuffie's going to be shut down. That's all there is to it. Like, that kid was too good to pass up. Right. But I think the running back position is the same way. I think that now that they they swung on Clyde and whiffed a little bit, I think going forward, now that we've talked about running backs kind of devalued a little bit, I actually believe Brett Veach is going to start doing this committee style. We've already seen Andy Reid loves the committee running back anyway. But I think they're going to continue to go cheap. They're going to continue to go young. And the thing that scares me a little bit is the way Pacheco runs. He runs hard. He runs like a bull. He's already played one season. He's already had to have two surgeries at the end of the season. Pacheco may not get the second contract with Kansas City because running back lifespans are so short. You see that in those second contracts like Dalvin Cook, they tend to fade a little bit and then the contract gets too big and they end up cutting them. That scares me a little bit because I love Pacheco, but with Pacheco running for four years like a raging bull and no telling how many more surgeries are coming, do you think Brett Veach invests a lot of money in Pacheco for that second big contract or do you think they just let him hit the free agency market and go get his bag somewhere else? It just depends on what his health's like. I think Pacheco, obviously, he's a he's a guy that has a lot of energy. He's a ball of energy, right? So, I mean, I think he's got a lot of tread on the tires. He's looking for a long career, man. I think I think he'll have it. So, I think he could get a second contract for the Chiefs. I do. If he performs and he's healthy, I think he'll get a second contract. Uh, however, I, I do slightly disagree with something that you said, uh, yeah. that they just kind of are undervaluing the running back as far as the Chiefs go. Like, they'll just start doing, like, a committee thing. We know they do a committee thing. But I can tell you right now, I know that they bombed on drafting Clyde. Yeah. I get that 100%. But I would bet every penny I've ever had in my life that if Jameer Gibbs or B. John Robinson had been sitting there uh, come the last pick of the first round, they would have took him. They would have well, took him in a heartbeat. That goes with what I'm saying, though. That Pacheco was a seventh-round pick, and he come in and just stole the job. They didn't have any problem. If you come in and you played, you were good. If they see a playmaker, they're going to bring them in. I don't think yeah. the loyalty is with the player that much, to be honest, anymore. So at the four-year mark, if Pacheco has a couple more surgeries and this and that, we love them. But if they're like, hey, there's a first-round guy sitting there, and we're still drafting number 32 because we keep winning Super Bowls, and maybe Daenerys Prince is still hey, here. Look, and No one's ready for this conversation yet. It's way too far away. Isaiah Pacheco is loved by we love Pacheco. Hall and Chiefs Kingdom. So, hey, Mike, man, I just like to get prepared. Up these- I like to get prepared for the you know craziness to, of Brett V. You know what you need to get prepared for? Legereus Sneed being moved. That's a tough pill that you need to swallow. I'm fine. talking about Pacheco moving right now. That's just uh, absurd. You're just out here trying well, to make people look, mad at you. We're talking about the running backs, and I'm just saying it's a position, man. It's a position, and I just it scares me a little bit. That just propped in my head, scared me. I know people are thinking, uh, but you know what else? We've been talking about this. We got to talk about it today a little bit. Uh, yesterday we come out, we spoke on it a little bit with our live, I think with Haley the day before we spoke on it a little bit, but, uh, they had asked Joe Burrow and who the best quarterback was. And he said, I don't think there's any argument. It's Patrick Mahomes until someone has a better year than he's had. He's the one to knock off. So right. a reporter goes in and asks Jamar Chase. And of course, Jamar Chase being the douche he is comes out with this one. Uh, and he says, Pat who? Okay. First and foremost, um, I'm almost positive everybody in Cincinnati, once you get signed there, you need to come with a um, a dictionary and a thesaurus because they only know the word who. That's the only word in the <laughs> vocabulary. He did manage to spit out a three-letter word beforehand as well. Instead of day, he's replaced that with Pat and just rearranged it. So his brain cells are working a little bit. Um, but he says, Pat, who, taking a shot at Patrick Mahomes. Steve, do you expect anything differently from Jamar Chase, who is the ultimate... Uh, clown right i mean how is a guy that looks like the the typical mustache disguise how how is he going to talk trash on anybody because he he is that like you actually buy him for a halloween costume if you only have like a dollar at the dollar tree that's what you get you get the you get the jamar chase special you get the jamar chase Uh, but either way man like all these uh 
receivers over in Cincinnati, all they do is talk trash. Everyone wants to throw shade at the Chiefs because the Chiefs are the easy target right now. They're the big, they're the big dog. Um, that's fine. Go ahead. Throw your little pebbles at us while we're winning Super Bowl rings. Because first of all, Jamar Chase, I'm sorry, but um, give him a couple years and see if anybody cares what Jamar Chase has to say. And then uh, I'm honestly kind of disappointed. That's all he could pop out. Pat who? But but he did it with like this arrogance. Like he thought he was so cool. Like, oh, he thought that was a he thought that was a winner, man. He thought it was. I tell you though, I'm I'm disappointed in Jamar Chase. We know he can verbally abuse people. I mean, look at this one. His girlfriend come out and accused him of verbal abuse, said he called her a uh, a B word. We won't say it. Yeah, um, yeah, true. He verbally abused her. He called his own kid names. Uh, this guy's good with the tongue. Uh, but right. when it comes to somebody that can stand up to him a little bit, he don't want to talk too much. So he'll just say, well, Pat, who? Uh, he gets no respect from me. Jamar Chase. Think, um, Jamar is, Chase has probably hang, been hanging out with Joe Mixon, uh, learning that way of life. So, right. I mean, he'll get it better. He'll get better. He'll get better. He's, He'll talk more these trash These guys later. got more investigations lose. from the Cincinnati PD than they do Super Bowl rings. Uh, while we're trying <laughs> them on today, these guys are trying on a new set of handcuffs somewhere over in Cincinnati. <laughs> um, but I tell you what, we give Joe Burrow a little bit of a tongue lashing here and there. You know, we'll, we'll clown on Burrow a little bit. But I tell you what, Burrow, actually, when it counts, he's very arrogant and cocky. We get it. But when it comes to Burrow actually admitting that Patrick Mahomes is the best, I give him credit. And until you get clowns like Chase, Jamar Chase and all these idiots out here that want to talk trash, we're going to keep clowning on you because you look like this. And until you show some respect for the guy that owns your division, until you can admit you're the second best in the AFC and you always will be as long as Patrick Mahomes is there, uh, you can keep saying one and three all you want. Makes no sense. It, keep going. None. Nobody can touch the Chiefs right now. And, and I'm with I'm with Burrow. Until somebody knocks off Patrick Mahomes or knocks off the Chiefs, Everybody just needs to shut up about it. I mean, like you said, we've gave Burrow a lot of crap on this channel. We still will just because that's what we do. Uh, he's a, he's a, I mean, pretty much the Chiefs and the Bengals are more of a rivalry right now than a lot of rivalries in the NFL. Uh, because, you know, like the Chiefs and Raiders, the rivalry is a little dead because the Raiders suck. The Broncos haven't won a game against us since the iPhone 3 came out. So that one's a little, you know, dead. But there's been a little bit of one with the Bengals. So, I mean... I'm okay with a little bit of trash talking here and there, but at some point you have to realize you look like a complete fool when you say certain things. And I think Jamar Chase missed the mark with this one. I just think you look like an idiot. Yeah. I mean, come on. The Kardashians had, you know, they didn't have two moms last time they beat us. So, I mean, it is what it is. (laughs) Uh, We'll get into uh, to this one right here. I found this graphic today, Steve. Um, First time pro bowlers, their prediction, and they go down each position, this and that. If you notice, they got Kadarius Toney right here. Wide receiver, yep. they say he could be a pro bowler. Uh, Jawan Taylor on the tackle side for the Chiefs. I see him over there. Yep. Uh, do you think those are good picks? Do you think they left anybody off the list as a first potential time pro bowler pro this year? Yeah, I do. Uh, I think first-time pro bowler Isaiah Pacheco, I think he can make the pro bowl. Um, we'll see did how much work. Did he make it last year? Oh, did he? He made it as a kick returner. Oh, never mind then. But he okay. could make it as a running back. That's two different well, things. Well, this list looks good, to be honest. I think Kadarius Tony, man, just please stay healthy and stay on the field because I'm so excited what this guy can do in a full season with the Chiefs, Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, and and healthy hamstrings and knees and ankles. Like, just keep it together, Kadarius, because I think you're going to have a huge, big, big year, just a breakout year. I think everybody's going to see what he's all about. Juwan Taylor. He's been on the up and up anyway. That's why Brett Beach went and got the guy. He is one of the best right tackles in the game. So, yeah, for sure. I think that list makes a lot of sense. You're missing a big one. You're missing a big one. They snubbed him last year. Nick Bolton Nick will be a first-time pro bowler. Yeah, Nick, Nick Bolton. Bolton deserved it last year. If I'm not mistaken, he was first in fan voting, and they just kicked him out. Uh, it doesn't matter. No I respect. Mean, this guy gets disrespected from all ends of it, even our own fans. Well, there's a whole section of Dude, Chiefs team that think year, Nick Bolton is bad. Like, you have to literally – be so stupid that you barely know what football is if you think Nick Bolton is bad. Like, right. I see certain people, I won't say their names, but they'll put it on Twitter, and they will double down, triple down. Like, you're an idiot. Just yep. stop talking. You know what? Delete it's your ignorance. account because you don't know Delete anything it. about football. Bye. It's, it's ignorance. Uh, they're talking about, you know, it's the same guys that when uh, Pacheco runs the ball up the middle, they're getting mad because he's not dribbling. That's how much <laughs> they know about football. They think he's walking. Um, other than yeah. that, man, we got this one. You haven't seen this. We got another oh, no. build the perfect lineup, Steve. 
Uh, let's do it. You got quarterbacks right here. how fast right I can knock this one out, man. How fast can I win this? They don't let even me, give me, you. They don't even give you how much glance. money you get. I'm guessing fifteen. No, bucks. it was fifteen. It's fifteen. It's always Look, you're 15 taking Mahomes number one at five dollars. Hold on, hold on. So yeah, these are always fifteen dollars. And if that's the case, they royally screwed up. Royally, because I'm getting ready to tell you how you beat this game fast. For ten dollars, you take Pat Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Boom, yes. boom. That leaves you five bucks. So who do we want to take here? Because we're taking Devontae Adams for a freaking dollar. What in the world's going on there? Right. Uh, so let's take that's Nick 11. Chubb instead of Saquon. Yep, that's 12, 13, and that gives you two for A.J. Brown. Game over. Yeah. We won. You won the game. We and won if you again. Really, if you wanted to switch it up a little bit, you could, uh, you could, you could take Saqu- you could take C.D. Lamb and take Saquon Barkley, and you still have uh, just an unstoppable force. Yeah. I mean, there's so many different ways you can beat this game by just selecting Pat Mahomes and Travis Kelsey at the top. Dude, I mean, you could take Mahomes, Kelsey is 10. You could even take Austin Eckler. Could you imagine Austin Eckler in this offense? Right. That's $11. Uh, you can go ahead and take D-Hop if you wanted. That's 12 13 14 and the the dollar for Devontae Adams. You're not beating D-Hop, Devontae Adams, Eckler, Mahomes, Do you find Mahomes, it hilarious? This that is insane. Worked, Who puts these who, together? Whoever's working for NBC thought that Jamar Chase was a $4 and Devontae Adams was a $1. Like, I understand Jamar Chase is a good receiver. That's so what I'm saying. Did. But who? Devontae Adams is better than both of them. Hey, if you um, think this guy is better than Devontae <laughs> Adams... <laughs> Then you're out of your mind. Yeah, I don't even you think slow he's your better. Roll a little. Is he even better? Like, like, would you even take him over Debo Samuel or Mike Evans? To be honest, I don't even know if I do. Or AJ Brown. I'm, I mean, they're questionable. It's questionable. Like, I, I think don't. That... I'm not taking Chase over AJ Brown or Devonte Adams or Debo Samuel. Yeah, probably not. I mean, Chase Chase is a beast. Don't get me wrong, but he's just. He's, he's a little okay. overrated. He's, he's a little okay. overrated. If they called him for pushing off every time. Um, That's the problem. Like, when are they going to start calling that? Because when they start calling that, his career's over. I mean, I don't know. According to his ex-girlfriend, he pushes off a little bit. But uh, <laughs> he's this. He's this. And that's how we're going to end it today. If you guys have not watched our live last night with Haley Lewis, uh, former KSHB reporter, former locker room uh, personality. She had shows with Pete Sweeney. She's had a Pete's who? Weenie. Pete, Pete Sweeney. Pete's what? Uh, yeah. Go watch that live. It was really good, Steve. Uh, we had a good time. Uh, she's probably going to come back on the show sometime soon. But yeah, go ahead. Give us a uh, give us a thumbs up to help the algor- algorithm. I'll say it right in a minute. And then uh, go ahead and hit that sub button if you haven't. We're trying to get to 10K. And uh, click that little bell. You'll know when we come out with new episodes. Steve, you got anything else for him? That's it. Have a good one. I'm a saint from my soul.